Seema, how are we doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm blessed. So we're here today at uh, the Lee Valley uh, Athletic Track Centre. Track? Yes. Right. Complex. Complex. Yeah. Right. So, uh, just talking to Zach earlier on, and he tells me that you're a gymnast. Yeah, I'm a gymnast. Yeah, I've been doing it for about eight years. So I've been, I was a gymnast for eight years, and I've been coaching now for two years. Okay. Yeah. So what got you into it? Um, well, it's a long story actually, but to make it short, yep. when I was in primary school, we did like a little PE session on gymnastics. Right. And my PE teacher, I mean, my teacher at the time was saying that like, I have a talent for it. Yep. So she said that, you know, you should get involved in it. So yep. then, yeah, I got involved in it. And there you are today. Yeah. <laughs> So why, there's some girls would do something different things, you know, netball, maybe go and do other sports, football, cricket, now girls are getting into. Yeah. Why did you stick with what you were doing with gymnasts? Um, well, with rhythmic gymnastics, you can tell a story. Yeah. And I feel like, because I'm not very um, assertive and very right. loud, I was able to express myself through the sport and I found that more attractive if that makes sense. Yeah 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 yeah, yeah. rather than yeah. So with netball you can't really tell a story, it's just like you win or lose, but with rhythmic gymnastics you tell a story about how you're feeling. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. What's been your greatest story you've told as a gymnast? Um probably oh, I don't even know. Probably I, 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 it's, it's not something you can put into words, you know, you just feel well, like, okay, a moment. A moment that you think oh, so a great moment for your high moment. Um, well, there was a time I became national champion, and at that time I was going through a lot. I was actually homeless at the time. Wow. Yeah, I was 16, but then I managed to overcome it, and I became national champion that same year. So, wow. Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Thank you. So Congratulations. I told, I told my story in that competition, yep. and I think the judges felt it. So, wow. Yeah. So, a champion? Yeah. What does it take to be a champion then? Salima. A lot of hard work, a yep. lot of dedication. Unlike in football, talent isn't what speaks in our sport. It's more so persistence and to be dedicated and to, you know, that's more what speaks. Because you can be really talented, but if you don't have those qualities, you won't make it anywhere. Okay. Yeah. So now you not only just, you are, you, you, you are it, but you teach it. Teach it, yeah. So what inspired you to go from being it to teaching it? Um, well, I had to give up the sport, unfortunately, because I had an injury as well in my yep. back. Okay. Um, but I didn't want to leave the sport completely because it was my life. I spent eight years in it. So I just decided I might as well coach. And I actually enjoy it more than when I was a gymnast because I'm able to pass my knowledge on to younger kids and stuff. And they, they feel so inspired. They watch me and they just feel that energy. And they yep. so inspired. So. so when you're coaching and you're with these young people <clears throat> and you take them for a movement yeah. and they... They've been struggling to do it for weeks and then finally they get it. Yeah. What does that make you feel like? It makes me feel amazing and them as well. It makes me feel like I'm doing my job properly and it makes me feel like, you know, I just want more and more for them and they want it for themselves and it just, it's, what keep, it's like a drug. It's, it's what keeps me there, you know. So there's a lot of gymnasts at the Olympics, correct? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that, the Olympics and... Well, um, like I said, I do rhythmic gymnastics. Yes. So unfortunately, our sport isn't funded by the government. It's oh wow! Yeah, it's completely independent. Parents are paying for competitions, hotels, flights, everything like that. So unfortunately, we haven't had many gymnasts enter the Olympics. Only one of our gymnasts entered, and that was because we hosted it in 2012. Right. So, but other than that, we haven't had any funding. So, but I'm I'm hoping to push my gymnast to get to the Olympics and change something. That's why I'm here. There we go. There's, there's yeah. a story right there. Yeah. So why do you think it's not been funded, in your opinion? Um, it's mostly dominated by Eastern Europeans, so Russians and yes. stuff. So I just think that they don't really see the point in funding it, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's mostly dominated by Eastern Europeans. So, so I don't know. You want to make a change? Only. Yeah, but to make a change? I mean, yeah. can you imagine if you one of your Maybe students... Made it, yeah. I mean, we have a few that's pushing the scene. We had some that went to European Championships last year and um, world championships they went to. Yes. Unfortunately, they didn't get the best ranks, but again, we don't have the facilities, the funding and stuff. So to even make it there in the first place is, is a big deal. Wow, yeah. wow. What about maybe doing, um, traveling to the Eastern European 
countries and actually training with them. Yeah, we try, but it's, again, it's so expensive. It's, it's maybe two, two, like two to three thousand pounds for like one day. So can you imagine training for a month? It's like really, really expensive. So. And them coming over here and training? Yeah, we would have to pay them the same amount of money. Wow. Yeah. Well, could they yeah. not get funding for that? Because obviously that's what they do. So yeah. could it not work better for them if they got the funding instead? We're, we're pushing for that.